Chapter 14, Women and Work in the Philippines. Hi everyone, I'm Nino. Hi, I'm General Rose And I am Jodeline Gonzalez. And we are going to report in our subject, which is the Gender and Society. We are Group 8 of BSHF2D at Aklan State University, Calibu Campus. Here are the learning objectives. At the end of this chapter, the student should be able to identify the major problems women face in the labor and livelihood sectors, explain the value of equality in the sphere of work and labor for women, and list the policies that protect women's rights in the sphere of work and livelihood. Chapter 14, Women and the Work in the Philippines. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss how women in the Philippines and how women has equality in the Philippines when it comes to work. So our first lesson will be women in the productive sphere. So when we talk about productive sphere, it is more on a multitasker person or a multitasker woman. So they are just saying that a woman's work is never done. So this is simply means that every woman's work are, they do not fulfill it in time because they have so many work to do. But we all know that women contribute to the economy in all forms. They are the key contributors to the economy. In fact, the uh, women achieve economic independence through gainful employment. Next is the right to decent work. So we have here the Human Rights Law, which is the Magna Carta of Women, states that women have the right to decent work. So in section 22, of the Magna Carta states that women should have equality work as just like in men. The multiple burden of a woman. So women joining the labor force still have to attend to their reproductive roles at home. Having both productive and reproductive work is what feminists call the double day or the multiple burden. So if a woman work away from home or take a night shift, the relationship with their family may be compromised. The multiple burden of a woman might be employers assume that they cannot commit to their work. The valuation of care work. So women working in care industries must be valued both as workers and as women who working to support their own family. So we need to value the care work of a woman. Next one will be women-friendly workspaces. So we must implement new laws that recognize the rights of paid or unpaid care workers. Small, medium scale enterprises. A notable industry that has active female participation in the Philippines is the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Globally, the Philippines is the second country with the most active women in MSMES in that period. In 2015, around 45% micro enterprise owners were women. An MSME is a small enterprise which may consist only of the owner as the employee with a business capital below 10,000. Most MSMEs is, uh, are in the form of food stalls, retail services, or personal services for women. Migrant women. Sending Filipino workers abroad was originally a stopgap measure against the against the unemployment crisis in the 1970s. Women OFWs are often reported reported to experience various various challenges due to their low skill and low education level. Some women also experience violations in their sexual and reproductive health due to their various discriminatory laws in countries where they work. The sex trade. When talking about the sex industry, one usually refers to the reproductive activity called quitus or sex exchange for pay. And sex industry is viewed as a dominantly female issue because most sex workers are female and most buyers are males. Mm -hmm. Women became empowered and they have made a shift in sexual norms. This shift challenged the machismo of men while women have become more open to recreational sex. Double standard sex is where men are socially acceptable to have recreational sex and sex outside of marriage, but vice versa for women, because women were expected to express their sexuality in marriage. Thus, for women, sexuality was tied to morality. The current model of Philippine economy places value on monetary income and devalues care work. 
It also isolates women from the public sphere and public participation. This separation of the private and public spheres is an excuse for men to dismiss their roles as caregivers, using their earnings as the method to avoid their responsibility for housework and child care. The following are laws that cover women in the labor and livelihood sectors. 